In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at three different transition styles in After Effects which are trending at the moment. Hi, welcome back to Animation Deconstructed. If you're new to the channel, my name is Shaul Gonsalves and we're all about helping you become a better animator. So we're going to dive into the first transition animation. So let's just take a look at After Effects here. I'm going to create a new composition, 1920 by 1080p. And I've got two pieces of footage here. Let's just go to one and we're going to drop this in and the second piece of footage after that. By the way, you can download these on my website. There'll be a link in the description and uh, you can follow along or you can get the working files and actually apply it to your own projects. The first transition is the zoom transition. So, so what we want to do is start by just um, bringing up the scale. So S key, move over to about 16 frames if you're following along. And I'm going to move forward 20 frames forward and I'm going to take this down to about 29.5. Just hide this at the top. Just turn off our alpha. Then I'm going to move another 5 frames forward and take that back up to 30. So we get quite a bit of a scale here. Then I'm going to select all of these and just press the F9 key to easy ease and then go into my graph editor. Something to note, I'm using this speed graph, so just make sure you select that. And then I'm going to select this over here and just pull this in and do the same to this one. And I want to create quite a pointed kind of graph over there so that we get a very fast movement in the middle. I'm going to turn on motion blur for both of these layers. I can probably bring this in just slightly more to get a bit more speed on this. And that should be good. The next thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that we have some repeated edge pixels here so that we don't get this effect where you will see around the image. And the way we're going to do this is I'm going to apply a CC Reptile. So under effects and presets, we're just going to go CC Reptile. And what we can do is we can change the tiling to unfold. So this will just make sure that it looks like a, um, a tileable texture. I'm going to take this right. It's just Go 1600, 1600 for all of these. It'll be more than enough. And you can see what it's doing over there. It can come out of our graph editor. And then what I want to do is bring this in at about, let's say, one second. So the next thing I want to do is just show this. And after the scale has happened, I want to parent it to the bottom layer. This way it will actually scale out perfectly and we don't have to worry about adding keyframes to this layer. The next thing I want to do is I want to add some opacity keyframes. So I'm going to say, let's just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's bring this in a bit more and I'm going to say, Alpha down to zero. I'm going to move forward in about, let's actually do five frames and take this up. And this might be good enough for you, but in the example, I actually have another effect on this, which is called com. Uh, Line two, it's called optics compensation. So new, we're going to add an adjustment layer right above, and we are going to type into effects and presets, optics compensation. 
And what this is going to do is it's going to create that kind of bouncing effect. So it's going to create a lens distortion. Once we actually say reverse this lens distortion, let's just move to about here so that we can see it. We're going to change this to vertical. And then we're going to change the field of view. So I want to follow these keyframes right here. And I'm going to turn that on at zero, press the U key, and just keyframe zero there as well. And then right about here, let's take it up to about 40. And if you watch the image, you can see what's happening. It's really changing the lens distortion. Say about 48. And then once it starts going to about there, I just want to take it even further. So about 64. And then we can easy ease this at the beginning and at the end. Okay, the next example is the rotation zoom effect, and this is pretty easy. Um, if we wanted to use this, uh, let's just rename our composition to um, zoom. Then I'm going to duplicate it and just call this zoom rotation so what I'm going to do to replace this footage is I'm just going to come back here and so that we are matching our examples we have number two over here the bottom layer selected I'm going to hold alt and drag and drop on top of that and then I'm going to do the same to the top layer now something about these two scenes is that one set of the footage is actually larger than the other. So I'm just gonna unparent this and set it to the middle. Now you do actually need to unparent this in order to do the rotation. So we'll leave it as it is for now. Select the bottom lab, press U so we can see our scale. Press Shift R so that we can add rotation to the timeline. We're going to move over to the first scale keyframe and turn on the rotation. Then we're going to move over to the next scale keyframe and say 90.5. And the last keyframe and just say 90. So we get a little, little bit of an overshoot on that rotation at the end. Now select all of them, press F9. And I'm going to do a similar thing that we did with the scale where we had this kind of pointing up, just so it matches as we're doing that. I'm going to exit the graph editor, and then we can reparent our top footage. and just take a preview of this. Okay, now the last transition example is this kind of motion graphic style transition or photography style. There's trending at the moment where you have these blurred areas and you can also turn on and turn off different kind of branding elements. So I'm going to create a new composition. I'm going to call this branded transition. 1920 by 1080p. We only need about five seconds here. And this is also change this to 30 frames per second. Then I'm going to drop in my two pieces of footage. And let's just drop this to the bottom and move this one over. We'll position that again later on. The first thing we need to do is actually create the arrows which are creating this transition. And this will drive the whole effect. 
And the best thing about this is that you can change this effect later. Um, you can add circles or, or just keep it as a rectangle. Um, but it does come with a lot of power. So I'm going to select new. I'm going to say solid. It doesn't matter what color this is. And I'm going to say arrow. Let's just make that comp size. And I want to just control shift C and just call this masker. I'm going to move all attributes into the new composition and double click. Now you can make this transition as quick or as long as you want. I'm going to set it to about uh, 1 second and 20 frames. So let's actually create the arrow. I'm going to hold down here, go to rectangle tool. My layer selected. I'm going to double click. Let's just show if you can't see your mask, this button over here will show you the boundaries of your mask. And now I'm also going to just put some guides here so I can be a bit more accurate. This is the center of our comp. And this is the center of our comp. The mask selected again. I'm going to choose the pen tool. I'm going to add a keyframe over there. And then we can actually press the V key to go back to the pointer tool. Select these two and just move it back. Okay. I'm going to press P for position. I'm going to keyframe the first frame and I'm going to move this right off to about there. At one second and 20 frames, let's move this over and just animate this all the way over to about there. And this is going to take care of the right side of this. And uh, that's why these transitions are called split transitions, because you have a left side and a right side. And you can actually offset these to get different kind of looks. Let's press select the keyframes, hit the F9 key, and we are going to just add some curves to this graph. Now this is one of the common kind of uh, motion graphics graphs. Uh, you get kind of a fast ease in the beginning and then it slows really down at the end. The way we're going to do this is you will select your last keyframe, pull this until you can't pull it anymore. And then we just want to pull this slightly. What I'm doing is just matching it up with this line right over here, the center of that peak. Now if we take a look at this, that should be good. I'm going to say this is arrow right, duplicate this, call this arrow left. And the way to just flip this around is create a new null object, parent this to the null, and then right click the null, go to transform and flip horizontal. And then the last thing that we need to do is just create a mask for each of these. I'm going to say new, solid, and I just want this to be half the width of the composition. So divided by two, press tab. Let's just make this a different color so that we can see it straight off. Press OK. I'm going to align this to the right, duplicate it. So this is going to be for the right. There, I just double click that, let's go back, align this to the left, and then select our two arrows and set this to alpha mat. And this is basically our driver right here. I'm going to hide this mask for now, and what we're going to do is move to let's say about one second and three frames 
and I'm going to bring up this marker just move it forward and drop it on top there and then select alpha mat okay so the next thing we want to do is just let's um, add some Gaussian blur or Gaussian blur never sure how to say that I'm going to say repeat edge pixels going to add this let's say about 35 or maybe less let's say about 25 that looks a bit better let's just change the color of these two so we can see it better duplicate this let's change these and then what I'm going to do is I don't want to move the actual footage because I want it to line up with the footage below. I'm going to move the mask itself and just take the Gaussian blur off that. Something like that should be good. Maybe one more. Okay, the next thing we need to do is actually just displace this uh, layer with the Gaussian blur the blurred layer so I'm going to select it I'm going to say displacement map and add this then I'm going to point at the top mask and I'm going to change these to alpha and I'm going to drag this up let's maybe take this to 90 and then I want to drag this backwards minus five should be good now if I just solo this you will see that we are starting to get some problems at the top and bottom and the way we can fix this is just with CC reptile and we will drag this onto the footage drop it above the displacement map and just expand it up and down and also just uh, change this to unfold oh, there we go we need to also expand it to the left and right just to make sure that our displacement hasn't affected anything too badly okay so at this point you might actually want to just save this and put it out there but if you want to add that kind of branding which is on the example I just duplicate the masker once more I drop it right below everything else and I move it so this is why I started just after one second so that I could place this earlier let me just show this layer and then we just want to add a fill to this layer and on the other one I had a bit of an orange move this a bit forward and just hit the space bar okay let's move it back one more and as I say you can play with this as you like if you're finding this tutorial helpful hit the like button and subscribe also turn on that notification bell so that you get alerted when I release a new video now something that I've done in the files that I've uploaded on the website which you can download um, in the transition 3 I actually have added a few more um, layers for you so if I just go into this arrows I've actually got a circles layer which drives and you can see this update in the composition so head over to the website as I said there's links in the description one last thing before you go I've chosen a video for you to take a look at over here and then YouTube will just randomly select another one below that. That's all for today. Until next time.